You ready? Yeah. I feel like I need to be. You give me, give me like two inches. Give me six inches. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Whiskey Try. Yo. Inside the Whiskey Vaults, we're gonna answer the most commonly asked whiskey questions according to Google and shit. According to Alt Vista. <laughs> <laughs> ask Jeeves? Yeah, ask Jeeves. There we go. <laughs> so, question number one. I'm gonna be throwing the questions at you and you're gonna be answering them All right. after you pour me a whiskey. Well, we're gonna start by pouring a whiskey to honor question number one. Honor question number which one. Which was, so who invented whiskey? Who invented whiskey? Well, technically, distillation showed up with the Greeks. The first place wine was distilled was in Spain, but the first place we read of a distilled grain spirit yes. is Ireland. Oh, in so. 1405, Okay. there is a record, that's why we're pouring green spot, an Irish whiskey. Mm -hmm. There is a record of a chieftain Oh. who died from a surfeit of aquavite. <laughs> he drank himself to death. Oh, right. Yeah. Now that wasn't what we would have considered whiskey today. Okay. That was more like, probably like Pachin, right? Or like a new make. It wasn't aged or anything. It was just distilled grain. So it comes out kind. very clear. The yeah. color comes from barrel aging. And in Scotland, it was 1494 was the first mention and that was in basically a bookkeeper's tax record. Next question. Yeah. What is whiskey made from? It's made from grain. That's it. Okay. Any That's kind it. of grain? Any kind of grain. If it qualifies as an actual grain, yeah. Then it counts. Okay. Right? So, Quinoa, that's fair. That's weird, but what yeah. are the most commonly used grains? The top four yeah. are rye, barley, corn, and wheat. Not in that order. Not in that order, but yeah. rye, barley, corn, and wheat. Barley is first. Do you think we can do a quick rundown explanation of how is whiskey made? We're doing like the really generic version. Yeah. Harvest the grain if you need to, malt the grain, mash and boil the grain, get the sugars, ferment the sugars distill it as many times as you want using what you want, Right. put it into a barrel of some kind and age it, now you've got whiskey. If you're familiar with how beer is made, like the first part of that process, you're basically making a beer. Yeah. And then you distill, you run through a still the beer so you can pull out a more higher concentration of the alcohol. Right. Before distillation, most communities were doing things like beer style things, just fermented things, mm -hmm. right? Like wine, um, mead. Yeah. And the next phase was, well, that goes bad and then at the, some point. Yeah. But if we distill it, yeah. it doesn't. Then the smart people showed up and they said, hey, let's make this way better. That's totally what happened. Yeah. yeah. What's the difference between whiskey with an E and whiskey with no E, just whiskey Y? There's that one. Yeah. Effectively, there are lots of original documents showing mostly whiskey with no E. The Irish claim to have started adding the E in to sure. differentiate themselves from scotch. Sure. But it was around around before that too. Right. Uh, the, the irony is Americans largely considered to be like the Irish with E in the whiskey, right? Mm -hmm. But we've got some pretty well-known brands. Right that don't there's, do that, there's no e. like Maker's Mark. So there's no hard and fast rule. You can do whatever you want. Um, a general, very loose rule of thumb is the countries that have an E in the name of the country, those are usually putting E in how they spell whiskey on their bottles. Here's the funny thing. In the federal regulations for the TTB code in the USA, yeah. they spell whiskey with no E throughout the entire regulation. Oh, book. and that's in America. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> How many different kinds of whiskey are there? So let's just talk about the U.S. Right. Because if we get out of that, there's you things, the right? bourbon, the rye, the corn whiskey, the American single malt. There's roughly like 23 variations of whiskey in the U.S. federal code. You got bourbon, rye, wheat, malt, and rye malt. Mm. But then you've got three versions of each of those, so that's 15. Right. Then you got light whiskey, corn whiskey. Right. Uh, adult, it, right. And then in our federal code, we've got Scottish whiskey, Irish whiskey, Canadian whiskey, right. and what that code just says is whatever oh, yeah. Canadians say is Canadian whiskey. So it's, we it, agree. It's very, very convoluted. Yeah. But I think the question as asked is probably asking what are like the main categories of whiskey? Roughly five to seven. You got the bourbon, the rye, the uh, single malt, the wheat, the corn in the U.S. Right. And then in Scotland you have Scotch, but you have regions of Scotland right. which are very different from each other. So five regions in Scotland, but the two kinds of whiskey they're making are grain whiskey and malt whiskey. Right. And that's true. And Ireland has three grain, malt, and pot still. But in terms of like major categories, right. eh, you know, a bunch ish. <laughs> Daniel, what is? The best whiskey. It's the whiskey you like, the way you like to drink it. Right. This is a very, very common question. <laughs> and in the Whiskey Tribe, rule number one, mm -hmm. the best whiskey is the whiskey you like to drink the way you like to drink it. Yeah. Can mm. bourbon be made outside of Kentucky? Well, here's the thing. Don't tell the Kentucky. Lean close. Wait, lean close. Yeah. Don't tell Kentucky. Right. 
But yes. They have very strong opinions about it. Yes. But it's yes, an American can. category. You can make uh, bourbon from anywhere in the U.S. as long as it meets the requirements for distillation and grain type. I will argue, though, that um, Kentucky bourbon flavors have essentially defined the category for most people. Oh, yeah. They are absolutely the originators and popularizers of the category yeah. of bourbon. They have a tremendous history. They're making some fantastic products. But absolutely, you can make bourbon from anywhere in the U.S. Yes. Now, in terms of the bourbon requirements, it's at least 51% corn, mm -hmm. and the barrel proof is less than 125. No, no, that's distillation. Dist uh, yes, yes, yes. No, no, you were right. Okay. Uh, distillation is under 160, and then 125 max barrel proof. Yeah, and uh, it can aged in new oak. Bottled at least 40%. Can scotch only be made in Scotland? Yes. yes. Now, Scotland, they have a lot of uh, things where they're sourcing, they're letting other countries, other distilleries yeah. um, source the spirit, the whiskey from them. For, for example, if a Japanese distillery sources scotch from Scotland, mm. uh, they can't call it scotch anymore. But here's how, if it's not in a bottle. So you can, you can buy and sell scotch in the US like Alexander Murray. That's an American company in California. Right. Yeah. They're selling scotch, Okay. but it's arriving in the US already bottled. So it has to leave Scotland in bottles. In a bottle. But if it leaves in a tote or or a barrel or anything, absolutely not. Is Tennessee whiskey different from bourbon? Yes, technically, according to the rules of Tennessee whiskey as defined by Tennessee. But, but that's it, they're very close cousins, but what's the yeah, actual so differentiator? It starts as bourbon, yeah. in all of the ways that make bourbon bourbon. Basically but take a bourbon. They use a process called the Lincoln County process where they use carbon filtration. Either they'll soak it and drain it, or they'll run the new make spirit through it. There's variations, yeah. but it's it's a it's a filtration process. Yeah, it's basically sending it through some charcoal, and some people like the results, others do not, but it's a very close cousin of bourbon. Why does whiskey burn? Oh, that's actually scientific. Okay. So, there, uh, based on evolution, your your body is designed to warn you about certain things. That's why bitterness is generally considered bad yeah. historically. Well, alcohol as a chemical activates the pain receptors in your tongue. Yeah, and that's your brain going, "You're dying." What the. F are you doing? <laughs> this thing's trying to kill you. Right. And you're like, no, it's fine. I can quit whenever I want. Just a light poisoning is all. <laughs> it's no big deal. <laughs> and eventually, if you drink enough, you your will, brain gives up. You will beat that survival mechanism into submission. You acclimate <gasps> to that burn. Um, and that starts to take a back seat to a lot of the flavors and layers in whiskey that are hard to pick out whenever you're first getting into it. Yes, run up here, yes. Let the cereal flow through you. The powers of zero grams sugar, 14 grams protein, and only four net grams of carbs will make you stronger than you can imagine. Your physicality is impeccable. Yeah! Very impressive. Your training is almost complete. Hold. Hold here a moment. I sense something approaching from beyond. From beyond? Hmm. 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 What is it? New and unfamiliar flavors approach. Maple, cookies and cream. Now is not the time to trade. Now is the time to quest. We must travel the land and assemble a fellowship of heroes. The three pillars of flavor. The Cocoa Crusader of the South. The Fruity Ranger of the West. The Frosted Wizard of the Southwest. With the combined might of a full variety pack, we may have a chance to save the planet from tasty annihilation. Sounds very complicated. Will Rex and the Spoon Lord be able to build their own box and harness the power of the Magic Spoon in time? Or will the buff Cosmic Limited Edition flavors, only available in March, destroy the world with delicious nutrition? Find out next time on Magic Spoon. Go to magicspoon.com slash whiskey to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code whiskey at your checkout to get $5 off your order. Now shipping to U.S. and Canada. What is single malt? Mm. It's a category of whiskey. Yeah, so it's got different definitions, but the one that's generally assumed in the world is scotch. And it typically refers to a barley only whiskey, malt barley, yeah. made entirely at one distillery, like Glenfiddich, yep. a single malt. Yeah, yeah. That's generally what it means. In Scotland, one distillery, all barley, mm -hmm. pot still. Yeah. 
single distillery barley malt. It's two words meaning two different things. Yeah. If, if you haven't figured it out by now, mm -hmm. everything about whiskey is very futzy. So in America, <laughs> Malt is defined by all the same uh, requirements of bourbon. Okay. Right, which means it has to be 51% barley. It has to be aged in new oak, and and then it can be called malt. Mm -hmm. So you can actually have a single malt, and the word single means nothing in America. Right. And it could be 51% barley. It could have corn in it, and then we could still call it single malt. Yeah. Because America didn't regulate that way. Now the American. Oh my God! No, 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 no! Oh my God! We're not done. <laughs> The American Malt Commission is trying to change that. Okay. How long does whiskey need to be aged? Mm. In America, there's no requirement for minimum age. There's really not. Okay, so really quick, most people, they don't realize they really to be don't. technically considered bourbon, yeah. there's no minimum age. It can just go through an oak barrel, a couple of seconds, pour it back out, and it will still be as clear as water. But it's technically, technically bourbon. Now, bourbon. what people are thinking of, and they're not wrong, yeah. is straight bourbon, which has a two-year age requirement. Yeah. So to call something straight bourbon, it has to be two years old. Yeah. To call something bottled and bond, it has to be four. Outside of America, mm -hmm. most countries follow the three-year rule. Yeah. Not all, but most. Yeah. Three years, now we can call it whiskey. That's Canada, Scotland, Ireland. Can whiskey go bad? Mm, only if there's something wrong with the container. Right. If it's not sealed adequately, or, or if the cork goes bad. Or it goes bad, yeah. It could last indefinitely. Yeah, yeah. If the there's nothing right. There's nothing in the spirit, in the liquid itself, that no. is prone to rotting. Practically speaking, if you have a bottle that's super, super low, I'm looking for something that's really, okay. Oh, there we go, strand hands. Yeah. yeah. If you have a bottle that's very, very low. We got three months before we probably should have consumed Yeah, that. there's so much air in here that the interaction with that volume of air with that whiskey, especially if you're constantly opening and closing the bottle. Right. It's, con it's letting fresh air in there, it's letting all the ethanol out. You know, no, if it's a well-sealed bottle, you're fine for however long you need to be fine. Can whiskey freeze? Consumer grade refrigerators and freezers? No shot. Um, it's actually a pretty, if you like your whiskey chilled, uh, and you don't want to dilute it with ice, then you can keep a bottle in the freezer and it should be fine in the freezer. Are whiskey and gin the same? No. no. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, you distill it higher than you do whiskey. Yeah. You could use grain, but you can use literally anything that you can distill to that high. Mm -hmm. And then you add botanicals to like fix the flavor of whatever you were making. Are whiskey stones any good? I like them. I, I have yet to find a whiskey stone that I thought was worthwhile. It's because they get warm too quickly? They get warm too quickly, yeah. they don't chill your whiskey enough, and I it's like it. rocks in your glass and it's just begging to break the glass. Yeah. I don't know, I think there could be something out there. I have yet to find a set of whiskey stones that I thought were worth a damn. What does small batch mean? So effectively and legally nothing. nothing. Like look, what's one of the biggest brands that we all know on every shelf? It's, it's not, not Creek, Creek, right? What does it say on the front right there? Small, small batch. batch. Right. So it's just something that marketing people like to put on bottles to make it sound like it's special. It has no legal restrictions, regulations. Well. It's small batch relative to what that distillery typically does. What does barrel proof or like cask strength mean? Yeah, so again, not a legal term. Typically what it refers to is we dumped it out of the barrel and then we bottled it without we, proofing it down. Right, you didn't dilute it with any water. And usually that ranges low 50s to low 60s. Yeah, I would say over 50. 50% 50 ABV to well, low 60. Very rarely ABV. over 60 unless you're in a really hot climate. Yeah, this is percentage of alcohol. Yeah. Should I drink whiskey neat or on the rocks? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. You should explore every whiskey you have. When you find a whiskey you love, mm -hmm. drink it neat, add water, put it on the rocks, mix it with another whiskey, Try all the versions. What does the age on a bottle of whiskey mean? Talking about the age statement. Yeah, now this is one where the rules are pretty universal in that if you see this age statement on a bottle, yeah. like Laphroaig 10, yep. for example, um, it doesn't mean that this all this whiskey in this bottle is 10. Mm. It means the youngest whiskey in this bottle is 10. Yep. Because every time they do a bulk release of this size, who knows what, but. Let's say it's 100 barrels. Sure. The, the youngest whiskey, maybe half of it, is 10-year-old barrels. Yeah. But then to get the flavor you're looking for, you may have 12, 18, sometimes 20-year-old barrels mm -hmm. mixed into this to create the flavor profile that you're looking for. That's the same thing is true in the US. It's the youngest whiskey in the blend. Yeah. Is older whiskey better than younger whiskey? No, it's just different. Depending on the climate that the whiskey is being aged in, mm -hmm. you can have whiskey that's just 
um, you know, a few years, even several months. Yeah. It has a tremendous amount of color, of character, of flavor. Look at this. Like, what, three years old? This is Belcona's right? lineage. And this is like a decade. Yeah. Right? It just, it depends on so what you're getting. Usually in warmer climates and also climates that have a lot more variation, upswings and downswings right. in their temperature, they're having a lot more interaction with that wood. It's gonna pull out more color more quickly and more flavor more quickly. So it really comes down to taste preference up to a certain point. Yeah. The sweet spot for an age from category to category. Changes. It changes. It's so like Kentucky, what I tend to like is somewhere in the four to eight. In Scotland, I tend to really like the low teens. 10 to 20. Yeah. And in Texas, I tend to like two to three. Yeah. What does chill filtered mean? Uh, it typically is a process that yeah. is used by people who have created a pot still whiskey where you have fatty acids that make whiskey cloudy at certain temperatures. Right. So, and they want to remove right. the things that make whiskey cloudy. As long as the whiskey is 46% ABV or below, yeah. it won't get cloudy after it's been chill filtered. Right. And now, the pushback on that is... You remove some of the flavor compounds that create flavor in the whiskey. What is peat? Peat? Yeah. Actually covers between two to three percent of the surface of the earth. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, it covers more of the surface of the earth than anything but water. And if we're talking about peatiness, mm -hmm. we're usually talking about scotch. Peat lives in wetlands and boglands and swamp where the soil is so waterlogged yep. that uh, things fall into it and the density of those things compacts over time. Yeah. Now in certain areas of Scotland, Ireland, right, uh, Russia, it's tundra and you dig it out and you leave it out to dry and you burn it as firewood. Got these log brick looking things. Yeah. In Scotland and Ireland, you burned it for fuel. Yep. And when you're making whiskey, you need to, a heat source to dry the barley. Well, what do you use? The same thing you used to burn everything else, peat bricks. That smoky smell invades the barley mm -hmm. and then invades the whiskey distillate. Hey, let's go see some sh shit that's happening. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, you magnificent bastards. We are headed to a live stream with all the MBs and Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. We've answered the most common questions, but I think the most critical question is yet to be asked. How do you whiskey? With magnificence! <laughs> My boys do that. Yeah? Yeah, with magnificence. <laughs> and then they take a shot of... OJ. <laughs> no pulp, that's how the men do it. Uh, how do you whiskey, John? With magnificence. With magnificence. With magnificence! How do you whiskey? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, my good man, how do you whiskey? With magnificence. There you go. <laughs> See, that's how you do it! I'm very sure I know what's gonna happen. Yo. Uh, hello. Biggest question I've ever asked you. And if you know the correct answer, I will give you... A motorcycle. You want a motorcycle? Yes. You want a motorcycle? <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a motorcycle. <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. Motorcycle on the line. How do you whiskey? Um, the way that you like to drink it. The way that I like to drink it. <laughs> 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 Shit. You have a lot to learn, young Padawan. Yeah, I had my car towed, yeah. and the guy that was towing my car knew about the whiskey tribe, and we were talking about it. Yeah. And he asked me that same question. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. So close. You felt I the motorcycle. It's gone. <laughs>